The Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp is a familiar name to most, infamous for the atrocities that occurred behind its black gates. An estimated 1.1 million lives were claimed by the camp, amounting to around 85% of those who were sent there. If inmates were not killed in gas chambers or worked to death, the horrific conditions within the camp ensured that chronic hunger or disease were never far away. As a result, the average life expectancy of an inmate was calculated to be between 6 to 13 weeks. Amazingly, however, even in such dire circumstances, hope lived on. To this date, evidence of 928 attempts have been discovered, of which 196 have been confirmed as successful. This is the story of some of those escapes. On July the 6th, 1940, Tadeusz Wioski, a Polish cobbler, became Auschwitz's first escapee. He arrived in the camp on June the 14th, 1940, on the first prisoner transport and was given the number Prisoner 220. Less than a month after his arrival, Wioski made his escape, aided by five Polish civilian electricians. Sadly, Wioski's freedom came at great human cost. The Nazis took their anger out on the remaining prisoners, forcing them to stand for 20 hours in a roll call the following day. For the first time, public flogging was applied within the camp, and prisoners were beaten by SS soldiers roaming between their ranks as they stood their punishment. And so, in retaliation for its first escape, Auschwitz claimed its first mortal victim, David von Chesky, a Polish Jew. Having arrived in the camp in seriously ill health, he would die during the night of the roll call. The five Poles who helped Wejowski escape were arrested soon after and subjected to brutal interrogation, being imprisoned in the camp themselves. Only one survived the war. To add to the tragedy, Wejowski was later recaptured, jailed and shot, having spent a year hiding in his hometown. On June 20th, 1942, four Polish inmates, Kazimierz Pechowski, Stanislav Gustav Jester, Josef Lempart and Elgenus Bendera secured their freedom by executing an audacious escape plan. The group had decided to make their escape after being informed that Bendera had been scheduled to be put to death. The four managed to get past the famous Abitschmarsch Frei gate by telling the guards they were part of the work party that had been assigned to remove rubbish. Work parties of this sort left the camp on a regular basis, so luckily the guards did not bother to check whether this was the case. The group made their way to the stores, where three of them disguised themselves as SS officers, whilst Bendera used a copied key to break into the garage and steal a car. Bendera, who had previously worked in the camp as a mechanic, chose the fastest car available and a Steer 220. Then came the final test, a guarded checkpoint which stood between them and freedom. The group had no idea whether they would need to show any documents to prove their identity. Their only hope was Pachowski, who had been designated to play the role of an SS officer if they encountered trouble. As they sped towards the checkpoint, they began to panic when they saw the barrier was not being raised. At the last moment, Pachowski threw himself into his role and began barking orders in German. The startled SS guards quickly obeyed, and the group drove to freedom. This group's tale comes with a rare happy ending, as none of the four were recaptured by the Nazis. Unfortunately, the same could not be said for Jester's parents, who were captured and died in Auschwitz. Witold Pileski can only accurately be described as Poland's answer to Captain America. Before the Second World War, Pileski fought as a cavalryman in the pivotal Battle of Warsaw in 1920, the turning point in the Soviet-Polish War. Later, having founded the secret Polish army resistance movement during the early months of World War II, Pileski undertook the courageous task of organizing a resistance movement from within Auschwitz's walls. This involved orchestrating his own capture in September 1940, before founding a clandestine network of hundreds of Auschwitz inmates, who quickly became the Allies' main source of information on Auschwitz. Just before Pileski's escape on the night of the 26th to the 27th of April 1943, the Gestapo intensified their crackdown on resistance within the camp. Seeing the writing on the wall, Pileski knew he needed to escape before it was too late. Whilst working in the camp bakery outside the camp walls, he and two others managed to break out and overpower a group of SS guards. Having barricaded and trapped the guards inside a nearby woodshed, the band of escapees proceeded to cut an alarm cable and make their escape. At some point during this ordeal, Pileski was shot and wounded by German soldiers. Luckily, the bullet did not cause any serious damage and Pileski was able to avoid capture. Once outside, Pileski took little time to recover before he placed himself back in the firing line. 
He compiled a report on the camp, urging the Allies and the Resistance to liberate the camp. But unfortunately, his pleas were largely ignored. Pileski went on to survive the war, despite his continuous participation in resistance movements and recapture after the collapse of the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. Amazingly, his patriotic struggle did not end there. With the end of the Second World War bringing with it the beginning of the Cold War, Pileski put his skills to use against the new Soviet threat, organizing an intelligence gathering network in Poland. Pileski refused to flee his country and continued to send information to the Polish government in exile until his arrest in May 1947. Despite being subjugated to extensive interrogation and torture, Pileski did not give up information on his comrades. Convicted in a show trial on the 15th of May 1948 and executed 10 days later. To this day, he is recognized as one of Poland's greatest heroes.